your sexual orientation being the subject for speculation in this term, I just thought I'd forewarn you in case you hadn't... Um... Yes, <clears throat> yes, quite. Actually, the chair of governors mentioned it after last night's meeting. The governors? But it's only a rumour. Well, that's what I thought. So it, it, it has no basis in truth. I, Fine, it's good. It's just that um, parents can be uh, good. good. Hi. I've just been into your class. Things were getting a bit rowdy. Oh, right, thanks. Oh, and by the way, if your taste ran to something a little softer, shall we say, you only have to tell me. I'm as liberal as the next person, you know. And R&B is my favourite type of music. Great. Great, that's good. Right, who'd like to go next? Barrett. Okay. Now stand up then so we can all hear you. What are you going to talk about? People. Watching people. Watching people. <laughs> right. Okay, big voice. Most of the people you watch are really boring. They just walk around and do their shopping and that. But it really makes me laugh when someone don't know you're watching them. And they pick their nose or scratch their bums. <laughs> <laughs> but the best thing, right, is when you're watching them indoors. And they don't even know you're there. Once, right, I was looking through this window, into this house, watching these two women. I was just walking about, yakking. Poncy place. Big green rug all over the floor. Next thing I knew, they was kissing. <laughs> and grabbing each other's tits. I was wicked and I That's couldn't enough. believe it. Um, OK, who's next? God. <laughs> you think I'd be able to find someone without having to resort to a bloody lonely art set? I mean, I'm bright, I'm well off, I, I'm not unattractive. Well, maybe I should just stick with Frank. No, no, Frank's not the answer, and you know he isn't. Especially if you want to have kids. Karen, have you said anything about... Don't deny it. Now, look, look, there's no point in mucking around with a married man. If you want the whole package, you've got to go out there and, and you've got to just go find somebody who's eligible. Now, the odds are he's not going to just knock on your office door, so why not the lonely hearts? Oh, I don't know. I'm just not sure that I'm ready yet. Oh, yeah, like you can really afford to wait. Oh. Oh, thanks very much. God, now you sound like Mandy. All I'm saying is the fact that you've placed the ad means that you're more ready than you think. I'm sorry. What for? Oh, for the self-obsession. I am trying to kick it, you know. <laughs> Look, enough about me. How are you? How are things? Oh, um, you know, much the same. Chris!
Yes, it's me. No, I'm not all right. You've got to come home. <laughs> Thanks, love. So how are you going to celebrate? Pop up the club for a drink, I expect. Oh, I meant to tell you. We met a couple up there last week. Just moved in. You know what your dad's like. Told them all about you being a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out their boy teaches at your school. Oh. What was his name? Shearer. Scholes. That's it, Scholes. Do you know him? Yes, yes, it's Richard Scholes. He teaches science. Scientist. He'll be at the club with them later. Well, actually, I was going to suggest that we go out for a meal. Be my treat. Um, there's a new Italian up on the high street. No, love, you've got better things to do with your money than waste it on us. We'd just be as happy up at the club. Come with us. Keep your friend company. Well, anyway, you know your dad's not keen on pasta. It, it, he's not my friend, and, and really, an evening with Dick Scholes is about the last thing I want. I saw that friend of yours a few days ago, Chris. Oh, where? When I was driving back from the hospital. She didn't see me. Has she done any more about finding herself a flat? Only it can't be very comfy for her on that sofa of yours. Well, One might be enough for my back. I don't think she minds. She probably likes the company. Still, it can't be very nice for you, can it? Having your living room taken up like that. Especially if you want to invite friends back or bring a young man home. Those sofas, they're not no, made Mum, for... Mum, th th there's something that I, I need to tell you, both of you. Um, um, there's nothing wrong, is there? No, it's about, it's about Chris. Um, Chris, she doesn't sleep on the sofa. You haven't gone and got one of them futon things, have you? Cos I've read somewhere they can cause terrible... No, work. Mum, I haven't got a futon. Chris sleeps in my bed. So where do you sleep? Oh, Christ, where do you think? Chris and I sleep together. Chris is my partner. I'm a lesbian. And, and Chris... She's my partner. What on earth are you talking about? Lesbian. What kind of bloody nonsense is that? No, it's not nonsense, Mum. It's what I am and I've been trying... Dad? Dad? Dad, please. I don't know why you let the little shit get to you. No, you wouldn't. But if it bothers you so much, then make a complaint. Tell the head. Tell the police. How can I? Then you have no alternative. Ignore him. Well, yes, I mean, that would be quite easy to do if I didn't have to look at him across a classroom every day. Well, then come out. Tell them at school. They can't punish you for it. Look, I just don't need your snidey remarks. I've already got two parents who aren't talking to me. I know. I'm sorry. Look, I really am proud of you. They will come round to it. Karen, you're their little girl. They'll get used to it, I promise. Okay. Uh, Jack? Why'd you have to tell him? Have you been talking to Mum? Listening to her cry her eyes out would be more precise. How is she? Well, what do you think? What about Dad? Dad? Dad can't even bring himself to talk about it. How does somebody suddenly decide they're gay? That's what I'd like to know. Thought Mum was having a bloody laugh when she phoned. Is everything all right? Um, this is my, my brother Jack. Jack, this is Chris. Oh, we were just about to eat. Do you want to come and join us? You give it a couple of days, Karen, and you go round and see him, all right? Jack, why don't you come in? I'd, I'd like to talk to you. I would. 
Jack. Karen, it's been a call. He was sitting there in the armchair, bright as rain. Next minute he was on the floor. What have they said? Some problem with his heart muscles. I don't understand. But he only had his checkup the other week, didn't he? They said that he was all right. You at me now, eh? Do you want to talk? Well, look, come to bed. Let me hold no, no, you. No, no, no. I want to finish this. And Auntie Margaret, just about to go. How am I going to manage? Your dad always cut the grass. I paid the bills. You've got me and Jack, don't worry. We'll do everything for you. Come downstairs for a little bit, eh? So cold. Get you something. You got a nerve bringing over here? Your wife. Oh, yeah? What, you reckon Dad would want her, really? Or you come to that? Oh, Jack! Reason he's in that coffin's down to you. You know it? Oh, I know it. Mum knows it. It's killed him to think he raised a bloody freak. Bastard! You just couldn't keep your mouth shut, could you, eh? You just couldn't what? keep it to yourself, eh? Jack! <laughs> Stop it! Do you know what, Mum? I look at her, right? And that bloody died down there, what they 